Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and it's Tuesday, which means I'm doing art around the world, and it is February, which means I'm doing Japan. And for today's video, I wanted to do an artist spotlight. And I am doing this video on a woman named Emira Shoen. And in the Japanese culture, you refer to people by their last name first. So for this video, I will be referring to her as Shoen. And she was born in 1875 at the end of the Edo area era. And she was born in Kyoto Prefecture a couple of months after her father passed away. Now, the only reason why I mention this is because she was raised in a house full of women that were very strong and independent. And I think this sort of helped her become the woman and the painter that she became. So I also want to mention that during this time period, women were given brushes and painting supplies when they got married. And painting was something that women did in private, and it was only a hobby. But at the age of 12, she showed great aptitude and began to draw and doodle in her mom's tea shop of people and business folks walking by and hanging out. And three years later, at the age of 15, she, her mother let her go and join the Kyoto Prefecture Painting School. And here she was allowed to pursue figure drawing much earlier than most of the students there. That was something reserved for students that were further along. And here's where she sort of found her style. And she was greatly influenced by the UEO woodblock prints that I discussed in a previous video. And at the time, very few women were painters and lacked formal education. And that's sort of what women were required to have to become a painter. You needed a formal education. So her mom made sure at a very young age that she received this. And in doing so, she won awards. At 15, she was doing commissions, she was doing exhibitions. Um, the son of Queen Victoria, the Duke of Connaught, purchased one of her paintings, and this also helped her sort of skyrocket into stardom. She was very famous in her own lifetime, which is very rare for artists, and it's very rare for females, and it's very rare for this time period. And she was um, selected to be in the World Exposition in Chicago in 1893. And in this, I just, I love her use of negative space in this piece. It's probably one of my favorites. But she just, because there were so many eyes on her, so because she received so much fame, she also received a lot of criticism for her work. So people thought her paintings of women were too doll-like. They were not flesh, they were not blood, they didn't look realistic. And they criticized her for that. They didn't think it looked right. And, but I wanna talk about why she's famous and why she is so important. So, the sort of Tasho era made advancements, and that's the era she was born in, made advancements in the Japanese workforce, and art became more popular, and I think that that also helped a bit with her success. But she was, in and of itself, boundary-breaking, because when she painted things, she painted women, and she painted women that were everyday women. It wasn't the courtesans, it wasn't the famous folks, it was the everyday women in their homes doing everyday things. And she started to paint scenes from No, which it's N-O-H, and this is sort of a classical Japanese dance drama that's been performed since the 14th century. And at the time, all these performances were exclusively done by men. So Shon decided 
she was going to paint women in these performances instead and she was going to use female models and this is one of such example of that here is the instrument here is the performance here is a woman she painted instead of a man and she used the female model so later in her life her work got huge like massively huge and this piece in particular is at least six feet tall so two meters tall and over three feet wide so over a yard wide over a meter wide it's very it's they're huge pieces and she has no sort of background elements in her paintings so all your eye does is look at the female it only goes here this is what's important to her and this is what style she did now this style of painting females is called bajinga and she is sort of considered one of the forefront of this painting style that skyrocketed and made it so famous, painting females and making the everyday female look beautiful. And here is a very specific stance that's sort of powerful. And she became, so let's see. So with the Western production of oil paints, um, they became very, very popular, but she continued to use mineral pigments. So in all her paintings, these are all mineral pigments. These aren't anything from the West. And I'm not really going to go in too deep or at all about some of the propaganda efforts during the wartime that she and some of her paintings were used for. I just want to sort of discuss the importance of her and her art to Japan and her art for women and the art for women in Japan who wanted to become painters because she absolutely paved the way for them with her contribution to this Bajinga art style and painting women. And in 1949, she passed away at the age of 74. And her art has been featured on the postage stamp in 1965 and 1980. And in 2000, she herself was placed on the postage stamp. So I will link a bunch of things. If you want to know more about her life and see more of her art pieces, I will link a bunch of websites in the description box below. Um, she had a very sort of interesting life where she never married and she had a child out of wedlock and she did what she wanted and she did it in a way on her own terms and that was very unheard of and I absolutely love this painting and it's sort of like the quiet strength of these women walking in the snow fully dressed with all the different layers that made up their outfits and these sort of umbrellas or parasols and that's sort of what she's known for, is the subtle emotion on the faces, the strength, the quiet empowerment of these women in their stances in all the paintings. And I just think that is absolutely phenomenal. And I love her use of negative space. I love that there's no background. She wants you to look at the woman, you look at the woman. That's all there is on the painting. These are beautiful. And she chose every color very specifically and very carefully. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.